Hey, welcome back guys. Last time we had our client send over his position over to the server and today we're going to make sure that we get that message back or something back at least. So today we're going to be making sure that the, our server can actually send data to one or more client and we'll do it um, in a very easy way. So here you can see that's the code we had for the base server. So we had a flow like this update message pump into on data on our client. We had the update message pump. We're going to need the on data, which we will, will create this episode, of course, but then we also had the send to server. And that's the one I'd like to copy over for the moment. So we'll take this and we'll move it to the server. And instead of sending to server as a server, we'll send to client. Now uh, you're going to see that the thing change a little bit here because our connection is a single connection we have on the base client, but here on the server, we have a list of connection. So we'll have to specify it right here, net connection, connection. And now this way it's going to work with a single, um, a single connection, but then just beneath that, I'm going to create another virtual void, um, send to all, or we'd like to call it broadcast. Yeah. Broadcast could work. <laughs> and all we have to do is send the message. So in case you want to send something to everybody, then you can use broadcast and all we're going to have to do here is something, um, something like this, I believe. So we grab all the connection dot length. So like this, and then we check, is that connection created? So if connection at the index I is created, then go ahead and send to client with connections at the index I, and of course the message. So we're just reusing this function down here. Uh, so broadcast basically sends the same message back to everybody. Okay. That's all we needed to hear. So technically at this point, we should be able to uh, call this function on the client, uh, no, sorry, on the server to send something to all the clients. Okay. Uh, it should also help us with the timeout issues. So if you're feeling like you're having a timeout, that's only because the client is communicating to the, the server, but the server is not talking back. So the client thinks that he's pinging in, in, in nothing really. Now, our next step is going to be to receive that data over to the client. So we'll go where right now we're on the base server. We're going to grab our on data and we're going to move that over to the base client right here. And I think this one stays the same. Um, let me just double check here. We have on data. Uh, we have a reader. And yeah, here, instead of calling on a receive on server, we do received on the client. That's all we have to do. And of course, uh, we have to first call this function. This function didn't exist back then. So we have to make sure that we call it in the message pump. Once we have a on data message like here. We replace that by, of course, on data and we send it the stream. I think we're good. So if I just take a quick moment to look. Yeah. So here we call receive on client instead. Good. So theoretically, everything seems to be there and working. The only thing that is a problem right now is the fact that we cannot test because the server never sends any message to the client right now. So here's what I'd like to do. I'm going to take um, the, the message for the player position that we send every second. And once I receive it on the, on the server, I'm going to send it back to everybody as a broadcast. So that's what we'll try to do here. Um, for that to happen, however, we need to have access to the server. So here I am thinking maybe we could turn that into a mono singleton, or we could send over a reference to the base server when we call receive on client, um, receive on server. So I'm confusing myself here. Here's what I want to do. I want to go over to on data on the server. And then when we do receive on server, I'm just going to send this. So we have a reference back to this very specific object and we can call broadcast. Um, that being said, we're going to have to change our net message to receive base server server, just like so. So once we have this, we can now go under player position and now every, every logic related to player position will be tackled directly on this object. 
do note that the signature changed. We're now receiving the server. And we can say, hey, well, broadcast this message. Actually, do we have another? Yeah, hmm, we're going to be careful here because we have our own broadcast that we created. But there's also broadcast message because we're under mono behavior right now. I uh, got to be really careful. Just use our own. And I just realized that I don't know why I put a capital here. <laughs> okay, let me change that. Okay, back on this. We are going to broadcast the message, and that message will be... Um, I wonder if we can just do this. We technically could. Yeah, and then what's going to happen is once we broadcast this message, it's going to go through the same loop again, but this time on the server, and then instead of calling received on server, since it's the server sending, we're going to get it on the client, and then we should receive this down here that's really what we're looking for okay let's give this a look no suitable method to override okay because this one takes in the base server yeah it's the same thing here actually i think it would be a, a little bit easier and a little bit more uh, practical to do it on the chat message so we'll come back and we'll do it after that All right, and that pretty much wraps up a five video tutorial regarding the Unity um, the transport layer that we're actually using right now, which is com.unity.transport. Now, do know that I'm recording this segment here, the one with my face on. Um, I'm recording this one one week after everything. So I've been working on the project proactively. I've been working on making it better, but I wasn't recording myself while I was doing that for sole purpose that I'm doing a lot of trial and error. So um, after one week of intensely working on it, I can say I now have a solution that I like, um, that I think I'm going to be able to scale up. And it's something that uh, is a little bit different from what we saw in those videos. But I do invite you to, to follow me, to subscribe, because I will be releasing another uh, more long length, more talk video in which we are just going to be looking at what I have right now, um, which is a solution that I like. So. Just to give you a quick hint, it's a event-based solution. So when we receive a message, instead of doing stuff in the uh, receive on server or receive on client, instead we fire an event and anybody who is subscribed, for example, if we do a chat message, then you're on the client. Uh, if you don't want to have the chat message received on your client, you can not subscribe to that event. If you want it, you can subscribe to it. If you have another system in your game that listen for the chat message, both of them can subscribe. Um, so I think it's way more efficient in that way and you get to choose what you want to listen for as a client and same thing for the server. So a couple of things like that um, have been improved, have been changed. And I also created a actor system in which as a client, I know who's around me, but I don't know who's around me after a certain radius. And if I walk towards that way, then I'm going to get to know everybody who was there now. So I'll, I'll receive information about them and I'll drop information about the, about the person or the other actor that were there when I was on the other side of the map. So um, yeah, I got that working. It's working super good. So, so be on the lookout for that. The next video in this very specific playlist is gonna be the long form look at what I have right now. All right, I think I'm not forgetting anything. That's it. Thank you guys for watching and I'll see you soon. Cheers.